area and wait out the storm. And now we're going to go back outside to check on the conditions in Bucks County. That's right. And Stephanie Esposito has just taken over for our Jocelyn Mose. She joins us live uh, from Milford Township right near the Turnpike. Hey, Stephanie, welcome. <laughs> Robin Wendy, it is really coming down out here. The snow is just so intense, and as you can see, the wind is really, really strong. I'm getting pelted in the face here. Um, believe it or not, there are people on the roads. I'm really kind of surprised. Um, at least a dozen cars and trucks have just passed us. I have seen a couple of snow plows and a tow truck, so I guess there are there is a need for some tow trucks today, people getting stuck and that type of thing. Um, but the most fun thing I've seen so far are a bunch of people on quads and four-wheelers. People are enjoying this. They're out here. They're having a good time. They're yelling and honking at the, out the windows at us and saying hello. It seems everyone's in a good mood, and they're really just enjoying this weather. So it's gorgeous here in Quakertown. <laughs> Back to you guys. Steph, it's it's Hasiel and uh, Eve. Hey. Hello, can you hear us? Oh, See, she can't hear I us. I don't That's think she can hear is. us. But she, she mentioned Rob and Wendy. That's and right. speaking of our friends Rob and Wendy, they are standing by, ready to continue our coverage. So glad to see them. <laughs> Thanks for joining them. us this whole morning and afternoon. We hope you have a great day. Stay with Rob and Wendy as they take you through this storm. All right, bye-bye, everybody. If you listen to the critics, you're watching Devil TV. Good afternoon. I'm Wendy Davis. And I'm Rob Vaughn. Nice to see you. Uh, we have just uh, run into Hasiel and Eve for the first time since the late 80s, I think. Uh, we've never so. actually hadn't seen them in quite a while, but it's nice to see them yeah. again. And they've done a wonderful job keeping you up to speed they on sure this have. big storm. That was quite a shift they pulled yeah, there. How about it? And we are now on hour eight of our wall to wall continuous coverage of the massive snowstorm that has blanketed the mid Atlantic. That's right. Well, as we said, Eve and Hasiel have been here before the crack of dawn, and uh, the snow has definitely picked up since then. We've it got has. quite a few inches since they took over yeah. this morning. A little uh, tricky getting in here yeah. for us. Uh, the roads were okay for quite a few hours. Not that you really wanted to be out there and you had to go slow, but in the last hour or so when we were out there, mm -hmm. It was really starting to get tricky. Yeah, and I think I made it on 78 just before the closure. Yep. The, Luckily. The closure, yeah, that's yeah. Which is the big news of the hour. That's right. A lot of roads being shut down just because of the tricky travel out there. Like we said, if you don't have to go out, don't. And obviously you can't now, depending on where you have to go, because there are a lot of roads closed right now. Right. Some of the interstates have been closed in parts of Pennsylvania, and uh, we need to tell you about some of that uh, first off. That's right. Now, as we said, 78 closed, mm -hmm. 81, parts of 83, and the state just announced that they're going to be closing interstate 176 in Berks County. That's going to be starting in about 20 minutes. They're going to close 176 down at 2 p.m. today in Berks County. They will also be closing non-turnpike portions of 76, 476, and 676. That's also starting at 2 p.m. So that mm. gives you an idea of what the travel is like right now. And as we've already told you, I-78 is already shut down. Okay, and you mentioned 83 and part of uh, 81. They are also closed. As we take a look at some of the traffic cams, things are really uh, difficult out there now. Hard to see even. The visibility is very uh, short. I-81 is closed, by the way, from the Maryland line all the way up to Interstate 80, a big stretch of 81. The state says it's expecting to close additional roads as the conditions deteriorate. All right. Speaking of travel, let's get the very latest now from the traffic center. Vern Anderson in for Rick Edwards right now, Vern. All right, Rob, Wendy, we are going to have a very, very busy afternoon with road closures throughout the valley. We want to give you some of the accidents and incidents we're seeing right now. Looking at I-78 at Route 100, as we mentioned earlier, that is currently closed. Interstate, Interstate 78, 81, and 83 are all closed by order of the governor. No access to the interstate highways. We also have an accident south Whitehall Township, a disabled tractor trailer. Route 309 at Ridgeview Drive, obstructed traffic, and we're going to see a few more uh, tractor-trailer accidents this afternoon for sure. In New Jersey, Route 46 is closed in both directions from Hackettstown due to a utility pull in the roadway. 422 Amity Township, we've got a disabled tractor-trailer, U.S. 422 West, that is near... Um, 
Limekin Road, also 61 at Cross Keys Road, north of US 222, and obstructed traffic in that area. Schuylkill County, big news here. Route 61 also closed between Frackville and St. Clair due to hazardous road conditions. We're going to take you around the Lehigh Valley now, show you what, road, what roadways look like if you're out in the area. Route 145 at 22, you can see there are some people out on the roads right now, obviously going to work. If you need to get to work, it's essential. Please drive carefully, leave early, make sure your vehicle is in good shape, and be prepared to head out. 78 at 100, you can see still some tractor trailers making their way off of the roadway. We're not going to see much traffic on these cameras for the rest of the afternoon. Moving around the uh, Lehigh Valley, you can see it's going to be obstructed views for a lot of these shots here as visibility and whiteout conditions are starting to move into the area. 512 at 22, still a little bit of road work, road activity there. But again, best bet, stay off the roadways. Bridges and overpasses are going to be a mess throughout the afternoon. We're going to have whiteout conditions. The state is saying we've got more road closures on the way. We're going to get back to the phones and scanners, find out more information. But for now, let's throw it back to you. Thank you so much, Vern. As you can see, the cameras are even getting a little yeah. uh, clouded over yeah. there. Vern was saying the visibility is trouble if you're on the road. The visibility will continue to be trouble through our cameras as the snow just keeps uh, sticking. You know, yeah. some of that snow is more and more moving sideways instead of straight up and down. So. Definitely, and I definitely thought it was a lot wetter than it was the yeah. last storm we had. Yes, it, it was, was really sticking, so yeah. very, that very makes it heavy. tricky as well. All right, I'm going to get the lowdown on all of this from yes, uh, Chief Meteorologist Ed Hanna, who is himself strapping in for the uh, long right. haul here, Ed. Yeah, and I, you know, just to add to, you said we were doing, doing coverage all through the morning hours. I might add to that going back in time, of course, all of yesterday during the afternoon, evening hours, of course, giving you updates, and then all during the overnight on our AccuWeather channel. So we've been having you know, team coverage right through before the first flakes began to fall throughout our region. So uh, I want to thank you so much for allowing us to serve you in that capacity. I have to start by saying Matt Broderick, uh, we want to tip our hat to him and I, I thank him. He's such a great part of our team of meteorologists here uh, throughout the region. Not only Matt Broderick, of course, Amanda and Mark, uh, we are just so pleased to have our team of meteorologists serving you here throughout eastern Pennsylvania, western New Jersey, when we're so happy to do that. There's lots to tell you about here. I want to be able to first give you a kind of a heads up, snowfall totals. How much is already on the ground. We've gotten over a thousand emails. Keep them coming in. Go to WFMZ.com. There's a button there. You can fill out the form. The form's already there. Very easy to let you know. Obviously, you can see throughout the region, we're obviously seeing it anywhere, for the most part, between six and 12 inches. Now, there are some places like Berks County, eight to 13 inch amounts. Philadelphia, it's been fascinating. What's going on there? Started as snow, went over to sleet, freezing rain for a period, an extended period. And so snow totals there in Philadelphia have been held down. But we have seen the switch back to snow. And so it's a game of catch up for Philadelphia. But there, those numbers are a bit lower. Let's get back to Cinema Live. And I want to share with you some of the things that are going on. Temperatures throughout the region, obviously very close to the freezing mark. That means a number of things. One, obviously, but where we are below the freezing mark. But number two, this is a very wet, heavy wet snow, unlike the very light snow that we had last Friday night and Saturday. This is a very heavy, a very wet snow. So if you're heading out and you're going to try to get at least kind of the bulk of what's there now out of the way so that your job isn't, you know, twice the size as you once the storm starts to wind down. Now, you know, if you're going to go out and do that, not a bad idea because, again, heavy, wet, you don't want to have uh, twice the amount of weight at one time. Of course, we want to try to eliminate any possibility of folks going out there straining their backs or, of course, their hearts. So we're looking out for you there. Be aware of that. Now, all that said, we have seen, and I want you to know, we continue to analyze the Doppler radar very carefully. At this point in time, we are in the heart or the meat of the storm. We're thinking that between now and I'm thinking for the next five or six hours, we're going to see snow fall at a rate of maybe an inch or two per hour. So however much you have on the ground right now, you have to calculate that out. Of course, if we have an inch per hour, that would be another five or six inches. If it's closer to a heavier rate, and it's going to vary two inches per hour, of course, that would mean uh, maybe, uh, of course, another 10 inches of snow. So depending on the bands, and it's all banding, so I think another five to 10 inches on top of what you already have, a fair bet. Once we get past six o'clock,
I think between 6 and 9 o'clock it won't stop, but it's going to start to wind down as we move through the early evening hours. Again, it's not going to stop. It's going to continue on. But here's the thing. As we go throughout the day, please note, the wind is going to become a very big factor as that storm starts to pull away and a pressure gradient develops. And so what you've had up until now is just kind of breezy conditions, but the winds are starting to pick up. They're going to get going. And I think we're going to be talking about winds that could exceed 30, 40 possibly 45 mile an hour gusts would not be a complete shock. And so that's going to be blowing all night long and even into the first part of the day on Thursday, even though the steady snow is going to be ending here early evening. Uh, I, I think when I say heavy snow, I think it will still see some snow through until maybe 9 or 10 o'clock. But the blowing, you might not even know the difference because it's just going to be all swirling and blowing. And it will probably still look like it's still coming down because it'll be swirling about. Take a look at the winds. We now have 10 to 20 mile an hour sustained winds. Gusts have now uh, gone up to 25 or 30. So that's obviously very important. We have a little bit of an improved, kind of a little bit of a revised map based on what we have on the ground and based on what I just told you as far as I think over the next five or six hours is going to be the core of the, the meat of the storm, at least the heaviest snowfall. And then we start to see things wind up as the storm starts to move away. That 12 inch line, we move just a tiny bit further to the north from our original forecast that we've been talking about for days. Looks like it goes more through Monroe, Carbon, Schuylkill. And I mentioned to you yesterday and the day before that, if anything, we'd be shifting that 12-inch line. North and west of that line, 6 to 12-inch amounts likely. Of course, in this whole purple area, 12 to 18-inch amounts. There are some areas, though, in this other, we just added this band right here, because in those places, we in, already, in some cases, have exceeded 12 inches. This is north of Philadelphia, not including Philadelphia, because there they saw that mix. We're probably you're going to be talking about 12 to as much as 24 inches locally. There could be a couple of bullseye places that may even get a little bit more than that. So very tricky forecast, but that's what we're thinking right now. So I'm, I'm really thinking for the next five or six hours, that's when it's going to go and snow to beat the band. And I think once we get past that, we kind of transition back to maybe a lighter snow as the storm starts to wind up. Take a look. You can obviously get some sense here. This has been really just a tremendous storm. The primary low shifting all of its energy to a storm that continues to make its way now off the Delta Marva Peninsula, and that will continue to pull up but you can see obviously the back edge here this is all kind of winding back and kind of spinning these bands back and over our area and the question is where do we go well, obviously again the next couple of hours are going to be key and there's no question in my mind that for the next so like i said 5 10 12 hours things are going to get worse before they get back better and even though the snow will start to taper off and wind down through the early evening hours the wind will just blow that snow right on back into the roadways so you might be fighting an uphill battle, especially if you're you know, taking care of your driveway. So you might have to redo it. It's these darker shades of blue. And obviously, this is this clearly, take a look at it. It's almost like a, a jigsaw puzzle. Do you see some pockets, a little lighter shade than medium shades? All in all here, if you really broke this down and you just took the different shades of blue, you probably have about 25 different colors here, each one indicating intensity of snowfall. And it's those darkest shades of blue. The darker the shade, the harder it's coming down. Those are the places where you're talking two inches per hour. But this is all moving and twisting with the storm. And so it clearly gives you an indication of how complex this system is and then how also how difficult it is to forecast who's going to get the heaviest amount. So that's the challenge we're up against. The good news is that we are finally starting to see, even though looking down the road that they're, again, we, we had said six to nine o'clock tapering off. I'm thinking like six o'clock we'll start to see the heaviest snow start to wind down, not end, but I think up until nine o'clock, we'll still have some snow around. And then once we get past that, things start to taper off, but the wind is going to be a factor, no doubt about that. We're going to be on it. We're going to be here right through and uh, giving you the freshest information. That's the, the best way right now to forecast is looking at these map, and maps and, and, and what we call now cast with you. And I hope you stay with us. WFMZ.com, keep those totals coming in. We'll keep updating the maps. Guys, back over to you. Thank you so much, Ed. Mm -hmm. All right, very interesting. Uh, one to two inches per hour for yeah, a few hours. It's coming coming down, down pretty heavily. And just to make sure you're up to speed, the interstates in Pennsylvania, or at least parts thereof, have been closed. And uh, Governor Rendell says in a press release a little while ago, listen to this, for your safety, do not drive. Uh, you will risk your life and potentially the lives of others if you get stuck on highways or on any road. So keep in mind what the governor says there. If you really have to be out there, just be very, very careful if you don't have right. to.
stay home. Yes. Good advice. Yeah. All right. We, however, do have some people spread throughout the region, and we're going to head to one now in Easton. Jackie Shutak standing by on Northampton Street. Hi, Jack. Hey, Wendy. We've only been out here for about five minutes, but it's really starting to come down. You can even see on my microphone, kind of looks like a snow cone here. Let's show you how light and fluffy the snow is. It's still, it's really accumulating, even though it's uh, pretty light and fluffy, pretty good for snowball making. Uh, let's take a look at the roads as well in Easton. When Tim and my photographer and I drove here about 15 minutes ago, the roads, the main roads in Easton were pretty well plowed. You can see there's a track in the middle for the cars to go down. But as the snow really picks up, and like I said, it's, it got heavier in about the past five minutes or so. As it really picks up, the roads are going to be a nightmare out there. Some of the side streets are not plowed just yet. So it's really accumulating. And your best bet, obviously, is to stay indoors if you can today. That's the story in Easton. The roads are plowed, but it looks like the snow is really coming down and starting to accumulate, Rob and Wendy. Well, they'll have to plow again. Yeah, apparently mm -hmm. so. I was going to say, Jackie, when I was out there, it seemed like just recently the snow was really starting to stick to the roads. Are you seeing that out there as well? Most definitely, yes. I mean, the roads were pretty well cleared off about, you know, 15, 20 minutes ago. But now, most definitely, it looks like it's starting to p accumulate. And in the past two minutes, the snow really started to get heavy. Yeah. All right, hopefully. Alrighty. Not too windy yet, though, thankfully. That's yeah, good. <laughs> that's true. The snow is still coming pretty much down, straight down. Thanks, mm -hmm. Jackie, for that. We'll You're touch welcome. With you later. Uh, interesting, we were just talking about what Governor Randell said uh, to not go out if you don't have right. to go out there, but some people do have to go to work yeah. and have to be out there. Yeah. So uh, it's not that you are told you can't be on the roads at all, although if you need to use interstates, that's going to yeah, present a problem. Yeah, that's going to be tricky, no doubt. So yeah. I have to wonder, I know a lot of places like malls we saw are closing down or mm -hmm. shut down early or didn't open at all. Yeah. So we may see more of that as, uh, as we make our way through the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And we know people who are at workplaces where the workplace is open yeah. and people are, I guess, encouraged to come in mm -hmm. or not encouraged to stay home, however you want to put that. But uh, if you wonder whether pronouncements like the governor's will play into employers' uh, yeah. thinking when they talk to their employees about whether they ought to make the trek in. Right, yeah. exactly. Hmm. All right. Well, our reporters are looking at things in various places. We just were in Easton. Now we're going to switch to Allentown where Mark Schanenberger is standing by live at American Parkway in Hamilton. Hi, Mark. Hi, Rob and Wendy. And uh, the question I have for you two is who wants to go out in this stuff? You know, Great question. That is a good question. It, you know, why would you come out here? Why would you do it? I mean, I, we are freezing our, <laughs> our tails off out here. It's snowing. I mean, we came out here about five minutes ago out of the live truck, and I can see my uh, cameraman, Joel, already has probably a quarter to a half inch of snow on him. He's, a, he's my personal snowman right now. And we also have the other snowman. If you were with us earlier today, Ethan and uh, Amanda made this snowman here on Hamilton Street at American Plaza in his crown. I put that on him about two hours ago. That's kind of crumbling away, and you can see the snow piling up on that. Also, his snicker bar. You can't even see that. Uh, so it's kind of getting consumed, I guess, by him a little bit there. As far as the visibility goes, it's absolutely horrible. We got people with four ways on out here. We got trucks plowing, and as quick as they're plowing, we're seeing it fill right back in. It's it's really starting to come down here. I would not be surprised if we're talking about anywhere from an inch to, to two inch an hour rates out here in Allentown right now. It is really, really coming down. The visibility is really low, and the winds are really starting to pick up. So that's what we have here in Allentown. If you have to go out, please be careful. If you don't have to go out, the best conditions you're going to find all day long are going to be inside watching WFMZ. Guys, back mm -hmm. inside to you. This is, this is it is decent snowman snow, I guess. Yeah. Though. yeah, actually, Ethan and Amanda were telling me they started it off, and then a couple of the neighborhood kids came over and finished it off. So uh, that's our snowman. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that. You can't see his face. He does have a face. But uh, you can't see that anymore. Also, his arms, you can see the snow has uh, accumulated on them. Yep. One of uh, the ladies inside also got that snicker bar for him and uh, put it out there. She wanted to have her little place on this snowman. So Very nice. that's what we got. Yep. Very nice. Quite impressive. Yep. Yeah, and that's about the only reason I can think of an answer to your first question to go outside. If you want to do a little play. The, yeah, if you're going outside to play, that's completely different. Otherwise... Why bother, right? Exactly. Right. All Same right. Side. Would be Mark Schanenberger, who is joining us live once again in Allentown. Mark, how you doing? 
Hey guys, uh, it's an absolute mess out here. Uh, we just saw the the United States Postal Service uh, van kind of spinning out here. We also saw a lot of cars having trouble getting up Hamilton Street here. You can see a lot of people are out here walking, and you can see all the trouble they're having up there with some of the cars that don't have four-wheel drive. That is one thing that we've been seeing a lot of is cars out here that really shouldn't be. Nobody should be out here, but the cars with the four-wheel drive they can kind of get through this. The other cars, uh, we're seeing Honda Civics, and and, and uh, we're we're also seeing some uh, 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 you know other cars that just don't have four wheel drive. Now that's what we're dealing with out here. The visibility has actually increased a little bit. Now we can see up to Fourth Street. We have some uh, fans out here. Actually. The snowman has been getting a lot of publicity out here, and we do have one family that came out here and wanted to add a little bit to it. We also we already have the uh, Burger King crown on it. We have the Snickers bar, which at this point has been uh, kind of covered up by the snow. We do have a face on this, but, uh, you know, you really can't see it all this well. And this family has come out here to put on a scarf. So now the snowman gets a scarf. Uh, what is the name of your family? Navarros. Navarro. So the Navarros came out here. They walked down here. They've actually been waiting a couple minutes to put this uh, scarf on. So I'll let you guys do the honor. This snowman, like I said, getting a lot of publicity out here. If you live locally, you have something to add to our snowman. Let's keep on building this up. Let's have some fun with this in the immediate area. They certainly don't drive down here to uh, put anything on it, but uh, go ahead. You guys don't look like you're having so much fun out here. A little bit, a little bit wet. Cold. You know, that's another thing that we are, <laughs> we are seeing with this snow is that it's, it's not the snow that just brushes off of you. It's the snow that kind of sits in. You can see their jackets my jacket as well it's wet so that's what we're dealing with it's kind of a there's a there's a wetness to this snow it's it's not the snow that we dealt with this past weekend this is a heavy snow so please take your time if you uh, are going out and we've been mentioning going out and kind of clearing off your car or your driveway halfway through the storm it is a heavier snow than what we dealt with so kind of do it in uh, in layers maybe take off that top layer first and then uh, you can kind of take off the next layer and then the bottom layer you don't want to do it all at once because it is it is pretty heavy snow but hey, this Mark? is uh, the Navarro family out here like they're hey, uh, probably glad to put this uh, scarf on finally so they can get back into some drier weather hey, hey Mark yes can you can you do us a favor sure can, can you please take the scarf from the snowman and give it back to that poor little girl I know she's, uh, she's cold she, <laughs> she, she wanted so, to do this they, they came down here they actually stopped me me and uh, Cameraman Joel were inside, kind of drying off some of her clothing, and they they were waiting outside. They said, "We want to put this scarf on there." Does she <laughs> need the scarf? Go ahead, give it back. They, they said they live right there. This is what they did it for. Oh. You okay? okay? Yeah. Yeah. As long as they have more uh, scarves at home. I get a bigger spot from her, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they have more scarves at home that they can put on the little. Yeah, they, said they live right around the corner, so they're okay. going to go back and well, get. Well, then it's just a nice scarf. donation they're making. Very good. Very nice. Absolutely, the donations are are, are certainly All right. we welcome. Don't want to, we don't want her to catch a chill. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, well, she looks like she's doing okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Mark. Well, under those terms, right, that's fine then. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> we'll see you later. You may very well be towed away. Yes. Just so you know. All right. Our Pam Cunningham at once again at Second and Court Streets in Reading, outside our 69 News Berks Edition offices. Hi, Pam. Hi, Rob. How are you? Hi, Wendy. Um, actually, just to uh, r the snow emergency information that you just gave out is definitely important, but we did speak to uh, Reading Public Works director, and he did say that if people's cars are stuck and they can't move them, they're not going to force people to take their cars off the road right now. They're not going to ticket them or tow them. Um, so if you are stuck, don't feel the need that you have to move it at this point. They are plowing, um, and they're gonna ha they'll go around them. Um, we just wanted to come out here and show you a little bit uh, how bad the snow is coming down and how hard this wind is blowing and the, and the snow. So we're, we have our storm stick, uh, the, what we're calling it right now. And I'm going to put it in the ground right now and you'll see that it's about three inches. Um, oh, I'll turn it around. That's easier to see. Um, about three inches. Now this path was um, shoveled at some point this morning. And um, what I'm going to do right now is shovel it and then we'll see back in a half hour to see how much snow is coming down and just explain the frustration that you're going to have when you go out and try to shovel later on today. And like uh, Mark was saying earlier, you just 
this snow is heavier than last time. Um, I was shoveling in, on Saturday, and it was real easy to lift up the snow. This snow is heavier, um, so you need to take a couple of scoops to get to the ground. And this is just three inches. Now, granted, I'm not the strongest of people, um, <laughs> but um, it's definitely going to take a little bit to lift it and move it to uh, get to even hit the sidewalk. Um, so we'll we'll continue doing this, try it, get get it down to the bare pavement, and then show you back in a half hour just how much snow is coming down. It's just coming down so quickly. Plows can't keep up. We're seeing people drive and spinning and getting stuck. Uh, we have saw someone coming down the wrong way on Court Street. So don't go out if you don't have to go out because the snow is just keeps on coming down. Visibility is poor if you're driving. And even if you're walking, it's difficult to see more than a block ahead of you. Reporting live in Reading, Pam Cunningham, 69 News. Well, Pam, you made a good point there with the shoveling. You know, we saw a lot of folks out uh, walking. Um, I guess they figure, especially in a city situation, if you can leave your car at home, well, we can at least walk to the store mm -hmm. or walk to the corner market. But as you just showed, the sidewalks really obviously aren't in good conditions. And I don't know if, no. if folks should be out walking in the streets. What do the streets look like just as far as walking goes? Can you make your way through or is even that getting uh. treacherous? <laughs> Well, actually, I'm watching two people behind me. Actually, I don't know if Zach can come show show you these people who are walking right now. But as you can see, they're walking in tire tracks that were made earlier. They're waving right now. Um, they're not really even wearing boots, uh, I don't think. Uh, they're wearing sneakers. How's the walk, guys? Yeah, they're saying it's pretty bad. I don't know if you can hear them. Um, it's not, the roads are not in any condition for you to walk or drive. Everybody should stay home. Are you telling everybody to stay home? All right, well, why are you guys out? No driving. We're going to see some of those pizzas open. <laughs> You're going to see if the pizza place is yeah. open. Yes. Um, did you call ahead? No, um, we called um, De Carlos, but he's open. Okay. So we'll probably get some wings or something there. Okay. How, how, how has the walk, how many blocks have you walked? Um, from River Oak Apartments. Okay. It's pretty bad. I have three cars. I can't even use one. Right. So, got to keep going. Got to keep going. Well, be careful out okay. here, guys, because okay. it is not really under good conditions to walk either. Well, you should be out here neither. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Good point. I don't know if I'll win that argument, though. Um, so, yeah, it is definitely not walking condition. I'm standing in here. I'm wearing snow pants. I'm wearing uh, boots. So I can walk uh, okay back and forth between the station and out here on the street. But as you just saw those two people, um, uh, I, don't even, I didn't even catch their names. Um, it is definitely hard to walk out here. The roads, they're, they're really, it's just really difficult for the plows to keep up. And, and you'll see this car trying to pass the people walking in the street. And it's just dangerous. I know when I was driving into work today, there were lots of people walking in the street. And it was difficult to drive around them. And it made me very, very nervous that I was going to hit them because you'd lose control. You'd slip and slide. So, yeah, I don't even know if we should suggest people be walking outside right now. If you want to play outside in the snow, stick to your front yard. And I would say that's about it. Reporting live in Reading, Pam Cunningham, of 69 News. All right, good advice. Yeah, very good advice. Thanks, Pam. All right, stay in if you okay. can. Stay off the roads if you can. And we have some interesting things coming in from viewers. You mentioned the right. uh, Facebook comments, and lots of those are flooding in at our Facebook uh, fan page, just so you know, and you can look for those comments yourself. Uh, there are also people who have emailed us pictures and things. We have a picture we can show you of a snowplow fire. That's what we have here. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Wendy. We're talking about yes. what, uh, Hampton Boulevard and Exeter Street in Reading. Yeah, fire about company. 2 o'clock, I think this happened, 2 this afternoon. Right, um, and uh, it's a snow plow actually on fire. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess you can make that the back of the truck off to the right there with the, uh, the, the the dump part of the truck there and the front on fire. So we don't have a lot of information. We have this viewer picture. We're trying to get some information as to whether anybody was hurt or what else might have, have been a ramification of all this, but we just know uh, this shot has come in of a, a pretty serious fire there. Yeah, plow truck on fire, and uh, we're told that the, the fire company was able to get there and extinguish it, so the mm. fire um, was able to... Uh, um, be put out, luckily, but a lot of issues in the storm, as yeah. always. All right, well, we're going to continue our coverage now. We're going to go to Bucks County. Stephanie Esposito is joining us. She is near the turnpike out there in Milford Township. Stephanie. Robin, Wendy, there are actually a lot of cars out here. I was kind of surprised considering the conditions, and I made some friends who are getting around with an alternate means of transportation today. This is Tristan, right? Yep, that's correct. And Tristan, tell me about this baby. This is just a uh, Skidoo Snowmobile. It's an MXC 600, same as his. They, uh... They, they like the snow, but not this deep stuff. It's almost not even fun right now. Yeah, now how long have you been out here? 
I've been out here since 7 o'clock this morning. 7 o'clock this morning, and you're not frozen solid. Are you, what are no, you thinking? I'm, I'm warm. I got a t-shirt on under this. I'm actually sweating, but it's a wet snow, so my pants are a little wet. Wow. Tell me how fast can this go? It's like uh, 120, about 110, 120. Wow. And where do you, where does one go with a snowmobile oh, of this we, size? We can ride from Lineport to Coopersburg to Trumbowersville, almost into Haycock. And you're just doing this for fun. You're not going out for milk or eggs. No, no. <laughs> we did that yesterday. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm going to come over here. This is Ethan, right? Yes. Okay, Ethan, tell me a little bit about what brought you out today. What are you thinking? I'm, like, knee-deep in the snow over here, and you're out here for fun. My day off. Figured I had a little bit of fun on my snowmobile with my friends. Yeah, and how many of your friends are out? Because it's not just you two. Uh, we're actually meeting up with probably, like, six or eight more people. And I've seen, like, dozens and dozens of them going by. Is there a particular spot that everybody likes to hang out, or do you just kind of cruise in the streets? Just cruise, see what's going on. And you ride with the cars on the roads, correct? I mean, are you, like, right behind SUVs, or are you, like, doing other areas? Mostly you ride in the fields. Okay. Okay, well, stay safe out there. Stay warm. Um, as you can see, the wind is still really strong. We're getting pelted out here. It's not keeping these guys from having a good time, though. Um, there are still truckers on the roads. There's still SUVs. I've seen a couple random little sedans go by. And they're sliding all over the place, but people are making it to their destinations. Um, I don't advise it, but I think if you do have to go outside, you may want to call Tristan and Ethan. I think I'm going to hop on and go for a ride. So, um, Robin, Wendy, if you're looking for me, I'll be going 120 miles an hour down John Freeze Highway. Back to you guys. Hey, okay, hold on tight. <laughs> and we'll, we'll scrape all the stuff off you when we find you again and talk to you then. <laughs>